I'm really excited about this for two reasons. One, I feel like it does a really, really good job of kind of taking a snapshot of what happens when somebody just goes from work and work and work into the biggest song and you got everybody reaching out and this and that and features and just having so much motion out of nowhere. So it'll be really cool to kind of like talk through that with you, but also I love a good like tight beat success story. Like that's like my yeah. favorite thing. Like everybody who knows me knows like I started working with a whole bunch of different tight beat producers, et cetera, so. Everybody put their Glocks in their phone. Put your shit up. You got a stick on your shit, you got a 50 on your shit. Put your shit in the for me. Ay. Ay, ay. Uh, green. Uh, uh, Last out we caught was at the store, we had to scrape. Little bro hopped out tripping with that switchy, he didn't face me. They shot, they shot, they couldn't save him. We the ones getting busy up in the city, that's on my baby. They block like a drive through, ask the ops how much we slide through. Ain't beefing, but you they family. You get caught, then you gon' die too. A nigga ran down, did Osama like Obama now. Keep out two, three Glocks inside the car, even with my mama now. Hey, hey, it's thirty two shots inside this car, cause I got one shot inside my wood. And the nigga ain't taste, I was posted in the bike with a 30 clip, all black hood. Run from my op, niggas wish we would. Wanna be gang, they wish they could. All these op niggas wanna be famous, take my rap game. Put him in the wood. Niggas got the clapping up the parking, bro. I ain't making. That's when I turn my savage up on gang. I ain't gon' fake it. What? 2012, I had a 22. That bitch went pew pew. Now I got a Drake. I spot a op and it go boom boom. Bitch, I'm Jerry Springer to this shit. They know they dead wrong. DP lost a finger to this shit and now his head on. I'd rather ask my brother for I ask a bitch for anything. KJ off the lean, she off the perks. I'm on that henny thing. Riding presidential when elected killers in the back. I'm behind the passenger seat with no seatbelt, but I'm strapped. Yeah, I play with crystals and shit, but I still get you tapped. The lifestyle I live helped me in court, so keep calling me cat. Why you mad your bitch be choosing? Cause we winning and you losing. She say she go dry when y'all be fucking when I hit jacuzzi. How you mad she choosing me? You a dive, you know she was doing to me. We been swapping spit for a little while, this shit ain't new to me. Acting like I'm chasing her or something, she be pursuing me. Can't hold you, she be telling me all the time she wish that you was me. I ain't with that messy shit, I barely attest a bitch. I can't even brag about these thoughts, that shit be effortless. Red and white Ferrari, I come through fresh as a peppermint. I ain't caught up in that other shit, they tripping on black excellence. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, jet. Sound fit before a show, I gotta go, can't miss this check. Travel all around. Around the gold, doing what I want with no regrets. She feels safe with us whenever she with gang and make her wet. Yeah. We don't do the social tweet. Mm -hmm. These niggas too internet. Mm -hmm. Going live, trying to talk about who got shot. We don't get into that. Can you leave it up in the streets for me? I ain't trying to go to jail. Keep mentioning my name and all of your posts. It ain't hard to tell. If you get smoked, they gon' come looking for me. Nigga, you dumb as hell. This bitch think I love her. Who we? She must be drunk as hell. I can't let no suck, bitch. I love how they suck dick. Once I get my nut off, bitch, I'm skating like some Chuck Fit. I appreciate it, appreciate it big time, had some scheduling stuff, switch around, whatever. And, you know, I was able to hit up my man, the big goat, Ray Santana, the producer room, powered by producer culture. My guy, what's going on? How are you? Yeah, uh, yeah, appreciate you having me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like I'm asking how you are, but you gotta be feeling pretty good, what? YouTube number two trending, Sleazy yeah. Glow remix with Lil Baby and Sleazy World Go. You guys are going crazy, man. You guys are going crazy. Yeah, bro. It's a hell of a feeling, bro. Yeah. Um, but yeah, bro, too excited to, to kind of hear about how it all came together and what you got next. But I guess kind of like a good starting point, like where are you from? How did you kind of start producing? Like, how does it all start off for you? Yeah, so sure. I'm from Houston, Texas. You know, it's a big city. So, like, and then as far as, like, producing, it's like my mom rap, my dad rap. Like, it's just, I've always been around music. So, shoot, like, around middle school, 
high school, they, my friends had put me on the FL. So once I got FL, I just started going crazy. Oh, crazy. It was over with. Yeah. <laughs> it was over with. How um, at what age do you actually start like making beats? Like 17, 16. 16. Really like 17. And then at what age do um when do you start like sending beats out and posting them on YouTube? Do you kind of do it like right away, even with the beginning ones, or did you wait until you had like, to the sound? Nah, like the way the way I was cooking up, like I was cooking up at my grandma's house. So like when I first started making beats, I forgot like people rap on beats. So I didn't even know you could sell beats. So I just like cook up on her laptop, on her computer. I just have a whole bunch of beats sitting. Then people started like telling me at school, they were like, you know, you can sell beats. Like, then I just started. I was actually selling beats cash, like the first beat I ever sold, like $20 cash. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Um, and then uh so that's when you kind of start making them, selling them, etc. When do you start posting yeah. on YouTube? Like uh like 2018, 2018. I had posted like, like the whole motivation of posting on YouTube. It really came from like I was watching these producer grind interviews, and I see like, I see like Cash Money AP. Yeah, it was on that YouTube wave, and know like anytime I used to look up these back then before I started producing, I always see Cash Money AP name, and then with Keo with the Old Town Road. They were saying like they was up on like every day. I'm like, well, you could get on doing that. Like, I just started going crazy. And it's crazy because like my first time going to California with Sleazy, I met Kathleen AP and Kill. And they were like, that's like the main reason I started uploading YouTube. Yeah. No, it's definitely a crazy feeling, and especially because like you kind of caught uh a mega hit in, in its own and yourself too. Um, super, super cool. Cause those are two people that I kind of like always watched and admired from afar. And uh, when I got to lock in with them and now I would consider myself kind of like f- friends really with both of them. Keo is my dog. He's been to the office a bunch of times. So it's really, really cool. And it's cool that you kind of took it and ran with it and did your own thing. And now you're having the same type of results happen, which is just crazy. So and we got some shit on the way. Yeah. What uh at what point does your like YouTube channel actually start picking up traction? Uh I ain't gonna lie, my YouTube channel, it really, in my opinion, shit start going crazy off the first video. Like the first YouTube beat I put up, like it was a Tis Korean type beat, but it got like 10,000 views. I was like, oh, shit, like, bro, because I'm, I'm over expecting it to get, like, five views. Yeah. Like, and with that, it's like, Tissa Green, he, he lit in Houston, so it was like, that got my name out there a lot. A lot of people was hitting me up. It's true. And then, I don't know, like, it died down for, like, a little bit. Like, probably I had shit going on. Like, you know, Beats wasn't fully, you know, taken up. And I was spending so much money, so it was like, I don't know, though. I'd say when I knew it was for sure, probably around, like, March this time last year. Yeah. For sure. So that's when I had got my um first placement with Spot em Got em off a beat he picked off my channel. Yeah. Now, nah, bro, it's funny because there's a lot of, like, kind of similarities even to me, like, I've worked in the YouTube space for so long, uh, you know, whatever, but like even the very first uh, producer room interview, I remember we did like 1500 views in a day and I was like, damn, 1500 in a day, like this is going to be a breeze. Like I'll have 10 K by the end of the week. Like the next one will go even crazier. I'll stay consistent and then drop the next one, drop the next one. Like, damn, I'm looking at some hundreds of views after a week or whatever, but it's all just about staying down, staying to it, and kind of going. Um, but yeah, so you kind of start having traction with your YouTube channel once the Spot'em Got'em 
uh, once you catch a placement with Spot, I'm got him and he notices your channel. At what point is, when does that happen and how does it kind of go from there? Um, well, the whole thing with Spot on Gotham, I, I knew I was going to get a placement with Spot on Gotham. My whole thing is, I want to, because I could tell like when rappers are searching up their own type beats, I'm like, I'm going to get them to see it one day. So I did, like, I do so many Spot on Gotham type beats and he found it on there. But it's crazy because I was the first person to get a million views on the spot and got on type beat. Mm -hmm. I was like, after, and then like right after I got a million views, it's like he just picked one random beat off my channel. It was like, it was crazy. Yeah. Nah, that's crazy for sure. It's definitely crazy. And I got to give you a lot of credit too, because like, a lot of people, and I don't even know if you like knew you were doing this, but just with some of the names you're saying, like, Spot them, got them at that point in time, Tisa Korean, etc. Like, these are really good, kind of like, like niche beat lanes to kind of like own on YouTube. And yeah. like, a lot of people will be like, Oh, I'm gonna make Drake type beats, but you don't understand. Like, you can download VidIQ too. This is kind of like a pro tip. Like, you can download VidIQ. And oh, you, I have that. Yeah. Have and you can search for like, uh, you can search for like different artists who have like low search results but high level of searches and then that can kind of be like your perfect lane and i know there's a lot of people who have talked about kind of like doing that but it's really good for a bunch of up-and-coming producers to kind of think about no for sure they they definitely should be doing that yeah i was looking at all that stuff when i was like thinking about like who because when you're trying to do like a drake type beat like, bro, it's like a million producers trying to do a Drake type beat, bro. So, Might more be. than likely, bro, you're going to get less than 100 views. <laughs> like, as far as you do somebody who can search more and have a smaller, you know, a smaller amount of videos to pick from, you're more likely to get picked. Same, that's like the same type of mindset I had when I started the spot them guy. I'm like, I did. Like, it was somebody who had, like, a video of, like, 800K. And I was like, man, I want to be the first person to get a million on this type of beat. So I could, like, feel like I took over the whole lane, you know? Yeah. Nah, that's the move. That's the move for sure. But, um, yeah, like I said, right now we're in the middle of one of the, like, craziest songs. Like, this song is just taking over the internet completely. You can't look to your left. You can't look to your right without seeing it. And that is the uh, uh, Sleazy World Ghost, Sleazy Freestyle. It's everywhere. Everybody and their mom has done a remix to it. The, he dropped the official version. The newest version with Lil Baby is out now. All produced by Ray Santana. It's, it's the hottest song. I was telling him, like, every year there's one of these songs that just everybody jumps on and does a freestyle to. And that goes back to, like, you know, Spot Em Got Em Beatbox was like that. Coil Ray No More Parties was like that. Sleazy Flow right now is like that. And just and just so much. And I got a bunch of different questions about the song and just how everything is probably just like shot through the roof since it's since it's uh, been out and just with the success it's having. But first things first, it starts as a tight beat, correct me if I'm wrong. Like, what tight beat is it? How does he find it? How do you get connected to him? How does it all happen in the beginning? Yeah, man. So, it started off as a spot him, got him type beat, bro. It was just one of those beats, like, bro, literally, it's crazy because I probably made the beat in, like, five minutes. Crazy. I just put it together. And yeah, it started off as a spot him, got him type beat, and it had, like, it probably had like 500,000 views. Then Sleazy hit me up on Instagram. And he like, like, yo, bro. Like, he tried to get in contact with me to get the beat. Cause it's like, bro, it's, it's Sleazy Flow. Sleazy Flow was already probably at like, like 900, like close to a million views. Like, it was crazy. I just found it on YouTube. Crazy. Dropped it. So it starts, it starts taking off. He's reaching out to you. He just hits you on DM. Yeah, just, just 
in my DM up. Did you simple. did you see the song before he reached out to you? Or nah, nah, I didn't see the song up until he reached out to me. And at that point it was already closing in on a million. Yeah. And what's kind of like your next move from there? Are you like, all right, let's go, let's do it? Are you waiting to see if it goes up more? Did you have anyone else interested in, in purchasing the beat? No, nah, my, my, yeah, I was pretty much like, yeah, let's go, let's do it. He was like, because, bro, I had my own, I had the, the whole video content ID, and I didn't even know. So I was, I was pretty much just getting money off of it for, like, the whole first half, first half of that being out. And then, you know, she was, she, we was chopping up, talking, like, seeing, seeing, like, what we could do, you know, we had came to some agreements so it made it work Howdy. they got signed so I'm going crazy yeah and um super super cool super cool uh artist as well I got to meet him very very briefly when um genius actually shoots out of this building and he came here uh for that and uh when I, like I told him me and you were connected or whatever right away. He's like, hell yeah, that's my producer. That's my producer. And I think that, that was super dope because a lot of producers or a lot of artists get big and leave the producers that got them going behind. And it sounds like with him, it's a lot more in the tuck and it's a lot more on the way. And, you know, this remix with Baby kind of just showcases that and it's, it's nuts. Yeah. See, the thing with a lot of producers, they might produce like that one song, but it's like, with me and Sleazy, we got Sleazy Flow, then we got Bag Dad Flow, then we got What They Gonna Do To Me, then we got this Step and that's to come out. It's just like, we got a lot of, yeah, like, we, we building. Nah, definitely. You guys are on the way. There's a lot more on the way. But um, yeah, so the song just starts taking off. I want to get to all the remixes and everything in a minute, but what... Was there a point before them when you were like, I know you said you saw it approaching a million views, whatever, but was there a point when you were like, whoa, I think we might like really, really have a song here? Like, did it ever get to that point? Or was it like the remixes that got you like, all right, this is getting crazy now? I know a lot. At first, I wasn't even tripping. I didn't even, I ain't gonna lie. At first, I didn't even know it was. Like, I knew the song was hard, but I didn't know it was a hit, hit. Like, Sleazy, he had to keep telling me, right? Like, bro, this song is a hit, bro. Because I knew I knew it was hard, but I'm just so, like, with the YouTube game, I'm so used to hearing, like, really, really fire music. And it might go up on one of my views, and it might hit a million views, and it might just stop. Or it might hit two million views, and it might just stop. But it was like, no, it just kept, just kept going. Yeah. Was, yeah. It's crazy. What about when it, when it starts getting all the remixes and everything? Like, what's your thoughts there? Because like at this point in time, Anali Chapo remix that's trending. Sleazy World himself trending. Young and Ace re remix freestyle trending. Big KBZ's done it. Like so, so many artists have just done it. Like when were you just like, man, like this is getting crazy. I, I knew it was crazy when when Chopper hopped on there. I was like, "Yo, it's nuts!" It's I was not like, "Yo, like I I bumped Chopper so much." I'm like, "Chopper on there!" I'm like, "Oh yeah, I know it's crazy." And then of course when a little baby did the TikToks to it, for sure, I knew it was like all the way over with. And it's crazy when he did the TikTok. I never thought he would actually hop on it. Yeah, man, it's it's. He that's somebody who's just so like ahead of the curve and everything. But um, what about that early on? Yeah. What about uh, what about this part now though? Like you got a song and it's just exploding. Like, what's it like when you got all these different like industry people hitting your phone, talking about this, talking about that? You got different artists tapping in to ask for beats for sure. You got different producers trying to collab with you to get one with him. Like. Yeah. Is it is it overwhelming? Like, how are you kind of dealing with and navigating through a lot of that? Uh, uh it can be overwhelming sometimes. But I I probably got overwhelmed one time. But I talk. I like. I feel like people should like talk to their family or anything when they get overwhelmed. Like, find somebody to talk to. And now I feel like now 
Because at first, when, when you first get in, you try to text every single person. Like, but now I just, if I text you, I text you. I'm pretty, I'm most selective on who I'm talking to now. Like, I'm trying to get somewhere. Yeah. You can't just be talking to everybody. You're going to burn yourself out. Nah. That's Especially definitely the top of making beats. Yeah. That's definitely a fact. I, uh, I want to salute you too on that point. Like, I think like talking to your family is like, it's clutch for anything or just even like your homies or whatever. I think people, I was just watching this happen with like a big like football recruit and he had like all these people and he was talking to all these different people. And like when he sat down with his high school coach to ask for his advice, his high school coach was like, like, uh, well, what does your mom think? And he's like, come on coach, you know, my mom doesn't know anything about this or that or that or that. And he's like, bro, make sure you listen to your mom. And it's like kind of the same type of shit. I feel like people lose track so easily and they can say like, oh, well, so-and-so doesn't know this or so-and-so doesn't know that, but they really know you, you know what I mean? And that's why that advice is so important because they can really kind of like navigate it. So it's cool that you have kind of said the same point. Then I feel like I had I pretty much had like an advantage over most people because my parents they came from the music industry so they kind of they kind of could tell they could see how I'm working they like oh yeah he working hard he might need to chill out and they, they they was always there to just give me that good advice. Yeah, definitely, man, it's too crazy. But what about this? I mean, your journey's far from over. You got so much on the way, but it has been a crazy start to it. Like. Is there anything, even if it's just minor, like mistakes you made, anything you wish you did differently, anything you wish you like looked at more carefully as it was happening or anything like that? I wish I would have invested my money more. Like, like it's a lot of it's a lot of producers out here where like they could invest more. Like even I still today can invest more like in my craft, like getting the laptop that's pushing it right like instead of just going and get it from the pawn shop i just go actually get a laptop like investing shoot and then you know this industry you know you meet a lot of people that's friends <laughs> so like yeah you gotta watch out for you gotta watch out for people there's a lot of people that was not needed <laughs> so and cause like some people they good for you, but at the same time they'll slow you down. And like in this industry, bro, you don't need nobody that'll slow you down. Not if you want to get little baby on your beat. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's about it. Yeah, no, this is one of the one of the industries where you'll meet some of the best people. But at the same time, I think it's like maybe the single most industry where you'll meet some of like the like shadiest like greediest people but um oh, but that's, that's what any industry you go to mcdonald's you meet some shady people yeah <laughs> it's crazy yeah. but uh yeah i mean kind of like in closing like what's some what's some of the stuff that you can talk about that you have on the way that you're excited about what have you been working on lately like what's it kind of looking like in in the in the day-to-day at ray santana right now yeah, okay, what I can talk about, man, I'm doing, like, I'm going to be on sleazy tape, as y'all know. Yeah. Like, half the tape, so expect to see, expect to see a lot of Ray Santana, you know, I did all the beats by myself, so, yeah, expect that with, you know, that stepping, I can't talk too much about that. Mm-hmm. But y'all, y'all might be surprised. <laughs> like it's gonna be a little surprise. Man, if the uh, if the the remix of the song having baby on it was any indication, I'm sure it's about to get real crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just a tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me actually ask you this. You you kind of like prompted me to to think of an, another good question. I noticed that you made it a point to say. You know, I did like half the tape. I made the beats. I made them myself. And I also know that for sure everybody's hitting you with loops and this and that to collab. What's yeah. your kind of thoughts on that? Like, it sounds like you're more of a do-it-yourself type of person, but do you think they're good? Do you think they're bad? And like, why are you kind of leaning more towards just doing it all yourself? I mean, I love working with people loops. It just, 
it just happened that would be the beat they picked. Like I'm as long as I produce it, man, we gonna we're gonna come up with a vibe. It don't matter how we do it, but we're gonna come up with the vibe. And I don't know, I feel like I'm feeling like maybe I just maybe I just don't send out enough loops. Or I don't know, maybe I'll just send out more of the beats I make by myself. I don't know, maybe I'm greedy. But I mean the beats they be picking. Yeah. It's like in this industry, bro, a lot of people just collapse. Like it's really rare that you just see somebody with a song that's super lit and they did it the beat by themselves. Like I don't be seeing that a lot. That's true. That's definitely true. It'd be like three or at least two minimum. Yeah. But um yeah, I guess you're you're making beats back at, at your uh, grandma's house or whatever back then. Yeah. Fast forward to now, you got one of the hottest songs out point blank period. What's some advice current Ray Santana will give to that kid back then who's just sitting there trying to figure it all out? Oh, uh, I'll tell him none of the parties matter. It's all about the money. Take care of your family. Stay at home. Make beats. And I feel like that's better than like going slaving at some job. Like if I would have been doing that, I probably would have been on. <laughs> yeah. So really consistency. And I don't know. I'm going to just bring it up because I don't be hearing no producers talk about it. But manifestation, like, I feel like I did a lot of that because I wrote down in my notes. I'm like, I'm going to be on the billboard. Like, the week I got the spot on bottom placement on his album, I was like, I wrote down in my notes, like, I'm going to be on the billboard. Like, I don't know how. And then it's on the billboard. I don't know. I believe in manifestation. Manifest, speaking into existence. Talk about it. Get you friends that do the same thing you do because that's going to be very important. And they got to have the same type of dedication or just don't even be friends with them. Man, I asked for one thing, but there's a lot, a lot of really good advice there. Uh, I'm definitely an advocate for like your, like your thoughts are connected to some sort of like higher power, like, uh, and that, um, the, like the power of words is crazy. So, you know, I've seen it myself, like really trying to make this happen, really trying to make this happen. Boom. And like the, the timing's usually right, but you know, like you said, stay consistent. The power of manifestation for sure. And man, yeah. not only manifest, bro, like get you a schedule because don't just say, yeah, I'm going to do this and don't be actually on the work. Like you see that, that's my schedule right there. Like I got a schedule. Yeah. That, that Once I got that, that's that's when I really started going up. Yeah. Writing stuff down too. It's just different when it's, when it's written down. You can see it. It's just different. Yeah. yeah. But sure. hell yeah, bro. We appreciate it big time. Like I said, just such a big congratulations to everything you got going on. One of the coolest people in the industry I met for sure, point blank, hands down. Super chill, super cool, and really gets to a money, money where your mouth is type of person. Like, I appreciate yeah. it big time. But man, Ray Santana, we appreciate it. Congrats on everything. Can't wait to see what's gonna happen next. Yeah, appreciate it. And the producer room, powered by producer culture. Everyone, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hit who you want to see next. Ray Santana, the GOAT. Make sure we have more stories of the biggest guys, but we appreciate it big time.